Okay, we're looking at a quadratic equation today, and even though it's squared and you hear the word quad, right? I believe that comes from the fact that a square has four sides, and from that, we can get a square. And one of the couple key pieces into finding a vertex, which we've seen as a H and K, or X and Y when dealing with this, is our X is equal to negative B over 2A. All right, this is very important. This is a big, big piece here. And what this does, what this does is allow us to find our X coordinate. And then by doing that, we're able to find our Y coordinate. So for instance, um, and, and, and knowing that AX squared plus BX plus C is also important here because that gives you your A, B, and C values. Um, so let's solve for our x. Let's go negative 6. So right, I, I have my 6 here. Negative 6 over 2 times a negative 3. And that's what my x is going to be equal to. And then I have negative 6 over negative 6, which reduces to 1. So my x coordinate here is 1. That's where my vertex of my graph is going to be. It's going to be at where x is equal to 1. Now, since I know what x is equal to, I can plug that back in. I can plug that back in and say 3 times what is x? 1 squared plus 6 times what is x? 1 plus 1. 1 squared is 1 times 1 is negative 3 plus 6 times 1 is 6 plus 1. Add these together, negative three plus six, I'm working left to right here, is three, three plus one is four. So that got me my y coordinate of four. Now, my a, like we discussed, gives me the, let's say, direction of my parabola, positive being up, negative being down. And in this case, they gave me a, um, a negative for my a so that means my my graph is going to be facing down and my vertex is the point at which my graph reflects so that's a point at or or maximum or minimum that will will reach so in this case it, we're going to one and four this is where my vertex is and I know it's facing down so it's going to have some relative shape like this. It's facing down here, right? And, and my vertex, which I spoke about, is the point at which gives me my, my axis of symmetry here, right? This is where my graph reflects at my x value. So let's say I ask you for some of that information. So let's, let's go ahead and let's look at, let's look at this graph on decimals here. Again, here's my vertex. I put in my, my equation. And a couple things we see here. One, we see this axis of symmetry where our, where our um, graph reflects. So if they ask for an axis of symmetry, you would answer that by saying, my axis of symmetry is where x is equal to 1. And understanding that this graph is basically going in a direction down forever and ever to, to negative infinity here, we understand that, that we've basically created a ceiling, or we could say we've created a max here. And if I wanted to know what my max is, I could say my max is y is less than or equal to four, meaning it's every value of y down for four. So you could also say, you know, my max is at y equals four. Uh, basically how you explain it is how you could describe it. And then you also have this idea of zeros, idea of zeros where my graph is, is intersecting my x-axis where y is equal to zero. So basically that means if I'm, if I'm to put in any value negative 0.155 
or 2.155 into this equation here, my result, what y would e be equal to, it would be equal to zero. So this is an important thing to identify on a graph as well. Now let's look at a different, different um, equation, maybe one where, where my, my a in this case is a positive and see what happens there. And again, uh, as a reminder, my formula to find x is negative b over 2a. And to list my a, b, and c, it's ax squared plus bx plus c. So I'm going to derive my b and a from, from basically here and here. And I have negative. Now, this is why I brought this up. It's a, it's a negative 8. And the equation calls for a negative. So What's my b? My b in actually this case is also a negative eight over two times two. And the common mistake students are going to make, the common mistake students are going to make is that they're going to, to basically, let's do this in red because we know, uh, it looks like red. Let's just use a blue again. They're gonna say the equation needs to be negative eight over four, which in reality the equation needs to be positive 8 over 4 because the negative and negative will give us a positive 8 which is equal to 2. Now what is that telling me? That's telling me what x is equal to. It's telling me that my x coordinate, my h, is 2 here. And uh, the h we've discussed is basically coming from our vertex form. Uh, it's just a good to know that when we're dealing with parabolas there is an h and k present. Um, and then to find my y, it's just simply, again, plugging back in 2 times 2 squared minus 8 times 2 plus 6. 2 squared is 4 times 2. Uh, let's just put that 4 minus 8 times 2 plus 6. 8 minus 16 plus 6. Don't make the mistake of doing 16 plus 6. Your order of operations tells you to do this first. 8 minus 16 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. And I get a negative 2 here. And that's my vertex. And if I were to show you that, in this case, maybe a little bit different here on a, on a graphing calculator, 2x squared minus 8x plus 6. Here's my graph here. Um, and you can actually use this calculator to find some of those information such as, now I know, this, I know this graph is facing up, so that means I've created a floor or I've created a minimum. So I wanna solve for my minimum. And see how here it says left bound? Basically all I wanna do is put this cursor to the left of my vertex, hit enter, and then put the cursor to the right of my parabola and I get a minimum of, it says 1.9, but we, we understand that to be two and negative two, you see that. You can also solve for zeros by going to the left of an intersection. So I'll go to the left of this intersection here, enter, go to the right, enter, and see how it's making a couple lines. One and zero. Now, uh, just to go to a Desmos diagram of that, you see, just like we did on our calculator, that we found a zero of one and zero and three and zero. And then here's our vertex. What I meant by floor is that there's, a, there's going to be a minimum value of y. So basically, y has to be greater than or equal to negative two. So, we can find a max at y is equal to negative two. And, and a floor is a minimum. So basically we have everything going in this direction. Uh, we can have any value of y. And I wanna show the zero here. I use the whole number here because watch what happens. If I do two times three squared for x minus eight times three plus six, 3 squared is 9, 2 times 9, minus 8 times 3, 24, plus 6, 18 minus 24, plus 6, 
minus six plus six, you notice I get zero. And, that, and then don't forget, this is y equals, or we could say f of x equals. So notice that when I put in a three, I got that y result of a zero, and that's why we call them zeros. And it, again, if we want to look at our axis of symmetry, that's just at the point at which the graph reflects itself, which is usually always your, your x value. So my axis of symmetry here is at two. I have, a, I have a minimum because it's facing upwards, and I have some zeros at my, my intersection of my x-axis, which tells me what my y is gonna be equal to zero. Uh, and again, you could do this using your decimals or some sort of graphing calculator to kind of reinforce your, your, your graph. This is something I would put on an index card and have and study. Uh, this is such an important piece uh, for finding information about a parabola.